Hello and welcome. I'm Nate442 and this is the 3D Creating Print Magazine. No actual known issue. Hello, by the way. I'm just over here. Uh, um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you a couple of things. Um, there's been a couple of things going around about how to get this all set up. Basically, I've downloaded and installed the 3D Creating Print uh, program, which is this one here. I've got the V3 firmware which is in this folder here, which is V3 software firmware. You basically you just follow what it says in the, in the manual and it will show you, not the manual, the, uh, the magazine, I think it was 78 or so, or 77, and it will show you exactly how to get this, um, this set up. My laptop can get a little bit loud, so I'm sorry if it's, uh, if it's a little bit loud at the moment. <laughs> um, but basically, to get the printer working, you have it all here. Um, we have the print head all set up. We've got the the top is on. The plastic is uh, the plastic tube is at the top. Uh, that's good. So we want to open up the 3D Create and Print EXE. Hopefully you can see that fairly clearly now. Uh, so what we have here is our actual build platform down here. Um, we have file, load, splice, uh, slice, sorry, and print. Um, now you on uh, config the first thing you'll probably have to do is to go on to manual printer control so you'll get this little pop-up here and at the moment it says disconnected which is right because my printer is off and also the switch hasn't been clicked yet so what we want to do uh, actually actually before this before this before this you need to go to printer settings and it will say here port com free you want to refresh port you just want to make sure it's the right port um, that the printer is actually connected on. You should have already done this part for the setup. It's going to get a little bit loud now because the printer is a little bit loud. Um, on here you want to make sure disable hood switch is ticked because you need that to be ticked right now. You click OK, config, manual printer control. We have this box here which says disconnected. So we want to connect. Now, you, you need a little product for this. There's a little switch down here, and you can just kind of push that down, and then at some point... Your printer will jump to life. And it will test the three limit switches, making sure that it is in the furthest position that it can be. Um, and then it will be... Live, I suppose. So you can press 10, and it will raise it up by 10 mils, that is. Press down and it'll lower it by 10 mil. You can't press down again and it... Wait, can you? You can't press down again and it'll go further down or even try to go further down because it knows where the limit is. Um, so it's not going to do that. And the same thing for up as well. It's not going to go up further than it can uh, as per what you calibrate it. Um, we haven't gotten to that part yet. Um, but we will calibrate it very soon. So on here you have heat extruder down here and heat print bed here. Um, these are both very necessary things. You want to, for your first thing, you just want to heat the extruder here. It'll beep just to tell you that it's heating the extruder. You might see some gunk come out the nozzle up here. This thing, I've got it standard at about 200 degrees and that seems to be around about a good temperature for the heat extruder. Um, so that is a good thing to note. Uh, it keeps it on average on the actual, um, well, the actual starting average for it is around about 180. So I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna try and go a little bit further down because I have a couple of prints that I've tried, like this guy, uh, and the top bit of it, he fell over, and the top bit just went really funny like this. I'm not really sure why that happened, but apparently that is due to overheating. And this one, I, um, what did I, do? I, I increased the density for it, so it made it a bit heavier. Um, and the top bit, which is supposed to be a little hook, has also muffed up a little bit as well. It's got a bit more of a triangly, kind of turd on the head kind of look, um, which is not what I'm going for. <laughs> um, but I think that is because it's too hot, so it's mangling. Uh, the rest of the plastic as well, which is not what we're after. Um, so yeah, that is now at 180 degrees. So we should start to see some kind of drool come out of the tip in a second. 
yeah, you can see a little bit of uh, filament um, coming out of the tip. I don't know if you can see it, but I can definitely see it. It's a little ball up here. It's only very small actually, which is good. It's at 198 degrees now, 199, 200. Now, with this you can press extrude and that will push out some filament, as you see. I don't know if you can see, actually. No, I probably shouldn't touch it right now because it's going to be quite hot. But now that it has dried, oh. Oof, Jesus, this stuff just don't stop. Okay, yeah, so we have some plastic that has just extruded itself from the, uh, from the tip, which is cool. And now it's just going to dry in that solid little form that it is. So that is actually just junk material. Now we can just throw that away. We don't want to see that again. Um, and we don't want to do that too much. Oh, it's still, still goozing out now. Yeah, perfect. Um, God, it's really going for it. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, yeah. So now we've got that tested. We can retract it. And now we know that the uh, that it's actually doing something. So what we're going to do now is we're going to disconnect from the printer on the software here and that will just kind of push it back to its default starting position. <laughs> Look at that little stick. It's pretty straight as well, uh, which is good. Uh, so now you will go to config collaboration setup and I'm not going to show you how to set it up right now because I've already co co uh, collaborated mine. But I'll just give you a little guide, a little guide on what you have to do. So B over here, we'll, pe we'll pull this up. Oh yeah, when the printer is on, this does not move. Like when you had the printer off before, you could kind of like waggle these things about and they'd just be fine, they'd be freely moving. But when the printer is on and it's in its mode, like you can't move anything, it's really weird. Really strangely strong as well. Um, yeah, so you press B, it'll take it to the B position, so it'll bring it down here like that. And then you press O, bring it to the middle, C, D, A. You just want to make sure they're all level along with the uh, pins at the bottom. If not, just keep tweaking, keep tweaking until you get it so that you can fit this only just under each side. This being the calibration tool, uh, under each one that it, it goes over. Um, so, yeah, because I don't, I don't want to break my calibration because it took me ages to get that calibrated properly. But that is how you do it. Um, now, we want to load a recent code uh, thing. So we'll go to um, King White. No? Porn Black? No? Okay, cool. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. There is some files in the PC. If you go to the uh, C drive and you go to um, Program Files, Free print, print, data, examples, Apple Tidy and Whistle. It's the two names of it, but they don't, they're not actually Apple Tidies or Whistles. This one is actually just a pawn. Just a pawn. So, yeah, this one is actually on the screen now. We want to slice it. So we'll slice it up here. Uh, it tells you, it, well, it asks you how accurate you want it to be. So you want it to be the layer height of 0 0.2. First layer height, 0 0.3. Fill density, 30%. I'm going to even bring that down to 25 actually, or 20, actually I'll go, I'll go 20, uh, 25, 25. But I think 25 is the standard anyway, but I boosted mine up a little bit for the, uh, the little alien guy last time. Um, so I usually have my temperature set to 200 as the main temperature, the first layer temperature as 210 with the print bed uh, at 55 as per normal and then 57 uh, for the first layer. So the first layer is already a little bit, always a little bit hotter anyway, just so that you can get it to uh, stick and and, and uh, hit the floor properly uh, and attach itself. 
So yeah, you can change the perimeter feed rates and all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to change any of that stuff because it's just doesn't seem like it'd be a good idea for me to change it. Uh, it kind of works at the moment, so I'm going to leave it. Um, I need to do a couple of test prints anyway. So I'll slice now, and it just slices the STL file, and you can see um, slicing STL file. It says on the screen it tells you how long it takes. Um, no rush. Here we go. Slicing successfully completed. I can't read your file. I'm going to click print. Connect into the printer. Now you have to put this this into the hole oh, actually it's already been connected it might not connect this time I'm not going to lie sometimes it doesn't do that it did this time so it says online printing online printing means that you have to keep your uh, this application open the whole time that it's connected offline printing means that you upload your data to the printer and it will print for you just by itself, uh, which does sound cool, but I didn't get that to work last time I tried. So I'll just do online printing for now. That just seems to be the way that it works. And now I'll show you what it's like when the print is actually going. Okay, so it starts off by hinting, uh, heating the printer bed now. So this is actually at 27, 28 degrees. Uh, and counting it's going to hit up to 57 which will allow it to take the first layer very nicely um, and then it will heat the nozzle up to 210 which is what I had it set as and then it will go for it and I will start recording again <laughs> when it's actually started moving because uh, that's, that's all we've been waiting for now so yeah I'll be back in a second okay so what we have here as you can see is the print head moving itself up this is going to be so loud <laughs> and uh, yeah I'm not sure how it's going to take the first layer sometimes it doesn't take very great it's just going to do this for a while I mean, it sounds amazing right <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while for the actual stuff to come out the head. Um, so I've seen it actually miss out a little bit of the first layer just because of that. Yeah, it's done that this time as well. So it kind of had a couple of skips in there for the first bit, but now it has actually kind of fixed itself and is kind of just doing the actual proper build as it should be. I'll be back at the end or maybe midway through just to give you a, an update uh, and see how it goes because you can't really see anything right now. <laughs> From what I know, anyway. Yeah, so I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so it's uh, finished the first layer now. It kind of beeped, and now it is on a proper speed one <laughs> with this one. What's really cool about this as well is you can actually see on the uh, on the actual screen on the 3D Paint Print software how it's doing so far. So if I just bring you down here. You can actually see the parts that it's doing right now. And I can actually zoom in on that real time. I actually got this. So you can see that it's kind of going around here. And this is actually what it's laying down right now, right in front of our own eyes. As an actual 3D printer, it seems to be very, very detailed actually, this one. Um, which is good, that's what we want, right? Uh, it does seem to be laying it down pretty well actually, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I was kind of worried about it at first because recently I've had a couple of prints just mess up and haven't gone really that great. So I will be back later on and we'll see how it goes then. Welcome back. Uh, we finished the print. Unfortunately, this is what we got. It's a bit scuffed at the top. 
it seemed to have stopped printing about halfway through, uh, which is kind of strange because the plastic's all there, um, the print head is connected, and I'm not sure why it just kind of stopped printing. It just did stop printing, um, which is never really good for the scrap material. Um, yeah, so we'll give it another go another time. I'm going to see if I can find some information online about how to fix that. And I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you think. Follow me. It's at Nick2 and thanks for watching.